Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to another video of my channel. I'm Kishal. I hope you all are doing well. So in my last video, I talk about few myths about ISC. I talk about that when people say ISC is the best research institution in India to do research in the field of science and technology. Why that is not true? And also I talk about the news that came last year that QS ranking has declared ISC as best research institution in the world. Why that news is also not true? So if you haven't watched that video, after completing this video, I recommend you to go and watch that video uh, that is there in my channel. I'll be given the link in the description or it might come into the i button. And now coming to today's video. In today's video also, I'll be talking about another myth about ISC. So I've seen people telling that, you know, if you are someone who is willing to do your PhD from top US universities, then do your MTech or Masters from ISC Bangalore. And they say that as ISC is the best research institutions, all the professors they are, they are eminent researchers who are well known in the international fraternity. That's why if you do your Masters from uh, ISC Bangalore and do your MTech project under those professors, then your chance of getting into top US university is very high. Now that is also not true. It's also a myth. Uh, things are not as simple as that. So there are a lot of uh, things that is there uh, which you need to fulfill uh, if you want to join a US university for PhD uh, position. So that I'm going to discuss in this video that why just doing uh, just uh, you know doing a master's from ISC doesn't guarantee a position in uh, top US universities for PhD. So, so if you want to know detail about it, please do watch this video till end. And before starting the video, I always say if you are new to this particular channel, please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get all the notifications regularly. Without further ado, let us start into today's video. Now, let's first discuss what are the things that you need to secure a position for PhD in top US universities. The first thing you need a very good CGPA in your MTech. Uh, good CGPA means I am saying around 9 out of 10 uh, during your MTech you must have and you must be wondering that why so much high CGPA requirement because you have to understand that in these top US universities the brilliant minds across the world will be applying and it is very common for them to get even 10 out of 10 in their curriculums like MTech or BTech. You can go and check it out all the PhD candidate that is there in different top US universities and, and, and just, just check their CV. You will find many of them have got 10 out of 10 or 4 out of 4 because 4 is the uh, scale that is there in uh, many many uh, foreign universities so it's very common that they got that much cgpa in their masters and bachelors so that's why if you have to compete with them you should at least have nine out of ten so that you know you can have a strong application for phd position whenever you will be applying so that's why first requirement is you should have a very good cgpa in your mtech next is you should have a good gre score now GRE is not a hard requirement for PhD as it is for MS application but you have to clear the cutoff. So you have to prepare for GRE and that is also you have to uh, do it uh, by your own independently and you have to write the exam before you are applying for PhD position. And in most of the US universities the cutoff is 320 so you have to make sure that you are getting 320 plus so that whenever you are applying for the PhD position uh, you have cleared the cutoff requirement for GRE score. Uh, that is there in most of the US universities. Next is that is most important is that you must have at least one publication or one paper in some good conference or journal. And here also the logic is simple because most of the people who will be applying for a PhD position in these top US universities across the world, they will have at least one paper in some good conference or journal. And in many cases, they might have more than one also because I have seen many people, they have two, three papers in their masters uh, itself. So that's why if you have to have a strong application and if you have to make your uh, you know make your way in these top US universities you should at least have one paper uh, in some top conference or journal during your MTech days. Fourth and final uh, requirement is that you need to manage a couple of strong recommendation letters from the ISC professors. So you have to give the reference of uh, those ISC professors in your PhD application who will recommend you further uh, for the PhD position on those top US universities and it is one of the most important uh, requirement uh, if you are if you are thinking of applying in top US universities so they will ask you for at least two and at most three letter of recommendations and this is something you must have to provide whenever you will be applying for the PhD position. So these are the four requirements that you must meet if you are thinking of applying 
going to uh, top US universities like MIT, Harvard, Stanford for PhD position. And now we'll discuss why it is not so simple to meet this requirement even if you are doing your masters from ISC Bangalore. First requirement was to maintain a good CGPA in your MTech. And good CGPA means as I was saying that at least around 9 will be a, will be a good CGPA if you are planning to apply into top US universities for PhD. Now the problem is in IISC any curriculum if you take in MTech it's not so simple to have a good CGPA. You have to really work hard to maintain a good CGPA that is around 9. Uh, because the question pattern in the exams of IISC in the midterm and final term that is very very difficult and you must have a solid understanding of the subject then only you'll be able to have a good score out of these midterms and final terms and also courses are, courses at IISC are mostly mathematical oriented so that's why there are a lot of things that is being asked in the midterms and final term question papers are like mathematically uh, mathematically heavy like you have to do a lot of mathematical mathematical derivations mathematical proofs you have to do and in that case mostly students suffer because math is something that is not a cakewalk for all the all the students so that's why most of the cases students suffers to do those mathematical derivations or uh, mathematical proofs and that's why people don't get a good CGPA in IIC on the other hand I have seen at IIT Kharagpur most of the most of the questions are actually applied questions like they will ask you a lot of numerical questions so that's why uh, scoring at IIT Kharagpur is much more easier than scoring into IIC and that's why I have seen most of the student at IIT Kharagpur in the MTech, they have a very good CGPA like 8.5, 8.7 is very common at IIT Kharagpur. But IISC getting 8 is even difficult. 7.5 is considered as a good CGPA in, uh, in IISC Bangalore. But the problem is, uh, you know, if you can't get a good uh, grade in your MTech days and whenever you'll be applying for the PhD position, US universities, they won't see that, that they don't know that in IISC the grade is uh, that much difficult. So whenever you are applying for the PhD position, they will just see your grade. They won't see all of these complexities that in IISC it's very difficult because the questions are very difficult. So they won't see these things. So that is the problem. Because So whenever you are doing your master's from IISC, maintaining a good CGPA is all the most difficult thing uh, that 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 a a student can face and that is the first hurdle that you have to overcome so you have to do a lot of hard work you have to study a lot then only you'll be able able to achieve a very good cgpa the next requirement was to get a good gre score and as i was saying that you have to clear the cutoff of 320 marks in gre and this is something that you have to prepare by your own this is nothing to do with iisc uh, because you know gre you have to prepare independently and you have to make sure that you have given the exam and getting the score before you are applying for the phd position now it's difficult uh, to prepare for GRE with uh, the regular ISC curriculum because you know there will be a lot of pressure in the ISC curriculum itself that you won't be having the time to prepare for GRE. So the best time I would I would recommend you to prepare for GRE is that after your first year whatever the summer break you'll be getting between May to July. In these three months try to prepare for GRE and try to make sure that you have the, the required score that is 320 plus. Uh, so that you know that is there that will be there with you because the GRE score will be valid for next five years so once you crack it that is done and that will be sufficient for your PhD uh, PhD application into top US universities. Next requirement and one of the most important requirement for applying PhD position in US universities is that you must have at least one publication in some good conference or journal. And the problem is that even if you are doing your masters from IIC Bangalore, it's not so easy to get a publication in top conference and general. Because the first problem is, as I was saying in my last video, that IIC is not a good place to do research in any branch of engineering and science. So there may be some branches of engineering science where IIC is not doing at all good research. And IIC might lack good researcher and good research lab. So for example, I have given an example in my last video that in computer science, in AI or ML, I personally feel that that IIC doesn't have sufficient amount of good researcher. So that's why if you want to do a research in a specific domain on which IIC is not at all good, then the problem is that you won't be having a good research lab, good guide, good collaborator uh, for your MTech project. And that will that will make your probability of getting a research paper out of your MTech project very slim. On the other hand, suppose uh, on, on the area of research on which you are interested, IIC is really a good institution. There are a lot of 
research lab is there even then also it's not so simple to get a research paper uh, from your mtech project you have to put a lot of effort from your end then only you'll be having uh, a paper out of your mtech project because doing a research publishing a paper is not so easy thing and specifically for you because you don't have any prior research experience in your btech days the first time in your mtech you will be doing research so for you the process will be even longer so you have to find a suitable guide first of all then you know you have to find out a problem statement the, then you have to solve it you have to send it to some some conference in general uh, the paper you have to send it then there will be a lot of reviews going on might be your paper got rejected from from that conferences then you have to again resubmit it to some other places uh, and and it's a tedious process like i remember my paper uh, what i got from my memtech project it took me one year to complete the whole process and after one year i got the paper published in some conferences so that's why getting a paper uh, doing a research that is a tedious job that is a time consuming job you have to be really very patient and you have to keep on uh, doing the work and then only you'll be able to uh, get a research paper out of your mtech project so that's why i was saying that even if you just join a good research lab under a good guide that doesn't ensure that you will have a good paper out of your mtech project you have to do a lot of hard work you have to do a lot of effort from your end then only it will be possible that's why i suggest uh, if you really want to have a paper out of your mtech project start as early as possible so that you know you will have enough time to complete the whole whole thing and at the end of your mtech you will have the paper uh, from your mtech project the fourth and final requirement was letter of recommendation so you have to give reference of few professors who will recommend you for the phd position and this is something called letter of recommendation or lor and this is one of the crucial requirement if you are thinking of applying into top us universities so in top us universities they ask for at least two or three letter of recommendations in in your phd application now this is also something that is not so easy to get even if you are doing your masters from isc bangalore because the problem is in your mtech uh, as your mtech project you will work under under supervisor or guide and you, if, if you really do well in your mtech project and if you suppose get some publication out of your mtech project your supervisor will give you a strong letter of recommendation that's well enough but how you will manage the other two letter of recommendation that is needed for your phd application because you have just worked under one supervisor and even if you are doing your masters from isc bangalore uh, no professor will give you a letter of recommendation until unless you work under them because they can't blindly write anything about you so that's why the problem is problem often the student face that they struggle to get the other two letter of recommendation or lor and what they do is they ask for the professors which courses they have taken so suppose i have done a course of a professor then i will ask the professor they write something about me uh, in the in the lor that i have taken this course of you and i get uh, so and so grade maybe i have get i got a very good grade so to so then then also that recommendation will be that much strong because the professor will write only about the course uh, that you have taken and what was what are the grade uh, that you have got but that is not something that says that how much hard working you are how good a researcher you are because the letter of recommendation actually signify about your uh, research skill and the, the professor whose course only you have taken he can't write anything about your research skill so that is one difficulty that is there that if, if you have just work under a one supervisor in your mtech days even at isc bangalore also you will struggle to get letter of recommendation of the other two or from the other two professors which is needed for your uh, phd application so i would suggest you try to work under two professors at least try to convince two professors that i want to work with collaboration uh, with both of you then what happen is if you do well in your uh, mtech project both of them will give you uh, the lor and two lor two strong lor will be sufficient for the phd position uh, phd application into top us universities so that is also one problem that you have to deal with that you need at least two strong letter of recommendations whenever you will be applying for phd position into top us universities yeah that's it guys that's the whole story uh, even if you are doing your master from isc bangalore you have to meet these four requirement and then only your place is secure into top us universities because the competition in top us universities in any stream of engineering and science is huge and if you have to make your way there you have to have a strong application which fulfill all of these four requirements i am not saying it's impossible to get into top us universities if you have done your masters from iisc that is not the thing obviously it's possible but you have to put a lot of hard work 
from your end during your masters then and then only it's possible you have to meet those four requirements and for that you have to do a lot of hard work just going into iisc and doing the masters doesn't ensure anything that you will be going into top us universities for phd so that's it guys that's it about this video i hope you like this video and if you like this video please like it and share this video to many other people who are an aspiring phd candidate and also if you are new to this particular channel i suggest you go through my channel and if you find it relevant for you please subscribe subscribe it and hit the bell icon so that you get all the notifications regularly that's it about this video i'll be meeting in the next video until then bye